Ooh. Oh. That was a fucking awesome part. That's a hell of a tube. <laughs> identify what is the biggest cause. You, you've identified some of the things your swing's doing, but... I guess hello world guys i can't afford a real pro tracer yet so you're just gonna have to deal with this for now but hey welcome to the channel this is kind of a big deal this has been a lot of work in the making a lot of recording a lot going on and i'm really happy to bring this first video to you i'm just going to be walking you through every shot from start to finish here on this very, very tough course, Cog Hill. Oh God, here we go, yep. So the expectation here, I wanna just, it's, I'm short-sighted, just trying to get it onto the green and give myself a decent chance at a par. Really trying to thump the sand. It's, it's hard and wet right now. Real tough shot here, deep bunkers here. Get a great thump on that one. Little left to right breaker here. I'm just aiming out the left edge, trying to drop it in at about uh, seven o'clock or so. These greens were in great shape. They have the sub air system, which is the same system they use at Augusta National. I think only about 50 courses in the US have it. Uh, it's, a, it's a big expensive upgrade, but it's basically a huge vacuum cleaner that sucks the water out of the green when you need to. The greens were super pure and smooth, uh, but it had rained torrentially on the way up, and you can see that the course uh, is just, you know, the greens are, were a little slower than what they looked. But Ace is live. Get 
you saw Jacob hit his shot there. I play a lot of golf with Jacob. Uh, I'm mixed Asian descent. He's Mexican, okay. Latino no, descent, Latino. which means that our twosome has more ethnic diversity than no laying up in barstool sports combined. So, you know, not not trying to dig too hard. It's just these are these are facts. On a serious note, I do think that you know, golf does have a pretty big color problem these days. It always has had, and it's just it's something I'll talk about more on this channel, but. I want to do everything that I can to get people of all income levels and skin colors and everything playing the game because I go out to events and I mean like I, it's just frustrating that more a more diverse group of people doesn't play the game um, in a serious way and I think the, the USGA and the PGA and all these organizations need to be doing so much more to make the game more accessible to, to more people and make it more welcoming and accommodating. That was a decent save right there. I showed you the arrow of the spot where I was just trying to land that on. So. But another bogey nonetheless. Pretty good move on it here. Oh, it hooked a little from there, went into the center of the fairway. Mission accomplished, really. Thank you. Through these vlogs, I'm going to try to do some of these kind of panning shots so that you can just get a feel for what the course is like out there. Um, I think that's something that other vloggers maybe aren't doing enough of, is just giving you a real feel for the scale and what the course feels like. Dubs itself, it's it's an enormous place, and the the manicuring and everything is is so good, and the uh, the the contouring is so dramatic. Um, the bunkers are super deep. I, I don't think the camera quite does it justice, but um, you'll if you go to the course, I think you'll be impressed with just how clean and smooth and um, undulating everything is. So here I've got just over. 50 yards or so to the flag and this is a shot I've been practicing a lot just that 50 yarder with a 60 degree wedge it's a hard one that you really have to have down if you're trying to get into the low single digits so I'm just trying to get a feel for it and then put a good confident smooth swing on it and I hit that a little chunky but because my swing technique was so decent it didn't dig too hard uh, the ground at Doves is pretty firm despite it's there being warm. some rain, and that was a nice kind of dollar bill divot there. But I did pull the shot uh, a little bit short. I'm a pretty good putter. I'd say it's an area of relative strength in my game, so I try not to three putt too much, and I make a decent share of mid range and, and longer putts. Another nice long par four here, and that ball was cut up the left edge, fading to the middle of the fairway, landing right there. I've been working hard on my driver lately though because I have a tendency to get steep and kind of hit these cutty shots and it really takes a lot of yardage off of my drive. Jacob hit a real good tee shot there and just bombed it. And you'll see in the differences where the balls ended up here in the fairway that Jacob's ball, he's up standing by it. Like literally he hit it 50 to 60 yards past mine. And I'm losing a lot of distance because I'm cutting across the ball rather than hitting directly behind it. Nobody saw me gussy up that line there, right? That, that was just okay, good, good. But the driver is something that I'm working very hard on because it's always been an area of weakness in my game and I know I need to get better at it. So here I've got a 5-iron in my hands, it's about a 190-yard shot in. And took off on a really good line here, going right at the flag stick. Oh. That dog will hunt. We 
we had very dramatic sky lighting because it had absolutely dumped rain, like I said, and uh, the course managed really well. I mean, the the turf took it well, and we were able to uh, have pretty good conditions. These chips I'm usually pretty good at, but I just hit this one way too hard. It kind of took the club back too far and yipped at it, tried to save it, and it was just no good. So went blasted by the hole, left myself an outside chance at a par, but it's just this whole round sort of had this whiff of, you know, you're just not oh. quite tidy enough to be making a lot of pars. And if you're not tidy at dubs, it can bite you real quick. So there's another bogey. I'm not really tracking the score that closely, guys. I, I just, I don't think you actually care that much. I don't care that much at this stage. I'm more trying to work on my swing and my stroke and, you know, a bit of core strategy. The, the scoring I know will come with time as I get more and more comfortable and get my, my swing practiced in. It's Jacob with another good swing. You can see he, for a little guy, he gets a lot of power behind the ball. I like that about his game. He really kind of goes after the driver with the bandit, and that's uh, something that I need to do more of is really kind of just be more freewheeling with the driver, which is exactly what I'm going to try to work on more. So a little bit about me as I underperform on this hole to come. Uh, I'm 35 years old. I grew up in the Midwest, but I've kind of lived all over the place. I lived in London, UK for a while, Italy, Canada, Texas, and now Chicago. I'm a pretty adventurous person, and I love my golf. I love food. I love cycling, my two dogs. I love my wife, and I love living in Chicago. And I started this channel and this series more than anything to just document my progress in the game. Um, it's an exciting time because I've been improving a lot, but I think like a lot of players around that 10 handicap level, I'm really just trying to figure out the right recipe of practice, core strategy, equipment, mental game, and all the things that go into going from shooting in the mid 80s to shooting in the low 70s. So I'll have a whole video that sort of talks about my own plan and all the pieces, but basically it boils down to one, how do you find time to practice and play? And two, how do you make the most of that time to give yourself the best chance at shooting low scores? And I think for as much as I love this game, I've never really been that good at it. And if I'm honest, it's because I haven't put in the work to deserve a really good game. I've gotten really lucky and I've shot in the 70s, but only three times in my life. Um, that does include a personal best 76 just a few weeks ago at the Sheep Ranch course at Bandon Dunes. Easily the best round of golf I've ever played. Um, but the goal is really to be going low 70s more often than not, and my dream would be to break 70 someday. And that just takes a level of commitment and practice, and you, you, you gotta make some sacrifices if you wanna to do that. Uh, just a quick sort of stream of consciousness note on the YouTube thing and, and what you're gonna see on this channel. Like if you, if you decide to subscribe, um, you should know that this is channel. This channel, it's like, it's a place for me to talk about all this golf stuff, but also I'm going to be sharing a lot of other pieces of my life that go hand in hand with that, whether that's you know, music and the cycling and fitness stuff, or uh, the travel stuff, or you know, vintage watches, just a lot of stuff that I'm into. It's like, uh, this is oh. my channel, and <laughs> yeah, if you like all that stuff, great. If you like some of it, great if you only like a little bit of it that's great too um, but yeah the the whole point of this channel is to just have a fun place where i can you know talk about my golf game a lot where i can get these course vlogs popped up um, talk about you know, what's going on and how to get better at golf um but the you know the the name it's, it's really just meant to convey something that's a little bit different than the uh, typical, swing. conservative, stuffy golfer. Like I, I think you know, golf needs a major image change, and you know, I do think that One golf is have. undergoing a bit of a shift these days. Um, that's exciting, and you know, I want people to be uh, you know, involved in that and um, learning more and more. 
about the game. So that was a really good shot. Thank you, Miura, my irons, um, or, or Miuras, and I absolutely love, love, love those clubs. Um, yeah, this way? Yeah. Pretty uphill, too. Okay. It's a good tip, actually, if you've, if you've got a good playing partner. You can save some time and play faster by kind of teaming up on your reads. It saves you from having to walk all over the place, and if it's a just kind of a casual round, like I think that's a, a much better way to go about it. So that's kind of like a par, I guess, if you don't count the first ball. You know, I just put a tennis wrap on it just to try it out. It's not sticky enough, though. I got to get a new grip. Hole number seven, kind of a meh hole, honestly. It's just I don't know. It's not that great. Just a kind of weak dog leg right and I would uh, there's water on the right the miss is really left I was trying to play a cut here up the left edge but I pushed it and the ball went straight right in the water, so. Wipe it off, go up there, drop, try to hit a good shot. On to the next one. About 140 yards in, it's probably a pitching wedge or a nine iron, or something like that. Center of the green. I mean, not bad at all. Here's Jacob. Didn't like that ball for some reason. I don't know why. So he's dropping well out of the acceptable range, but whatever. I'll be good. Another good smooth swing. I guess he, he ended up in the exact same shot. water that I did. He hit a really good shot right there by the pin. So Jacob's off grabbing a few beers. I'm alone here, got this putt, and I'm determined not to leave it short because I've left every goddamn putt short today. So I'm gonna put a little bit of extra mustard behind this. I'll do a section or a video sometime on how I read greens and how I approach putting. Um, but here, I'm trying to imagine a three foot circle around the hole, and that's really the, the hole I'm trying to drop it into. Hit it a little firm and just lift it out. Just, just lift it out. But overall, I mean, that was a pretty good putt. However, I will say that I got rid of that putter. Um, it was just a little too light, and I've switched over to a mallet putter now. Um, the putter that's that uh, that I'm using in this video, it's an old Ting Anzer putter, um, a copper one with a sound slot. And it's just a little too light, and it's it's good for like really really fast greens. But if the greens are anything but a 12, it's kind of just a little too wavy. Eighth hole is a short par four. You can see it's very well bunkered up the left edge. You're really wanting to probably play to the right side of this fairway, and depending on where the pin is, try to weave yourself a good approach. But even though it's short, it's really tough. You can't get overly aggressive on it. Like, I don't know, maybe you're the kind of guy who wants to just bomb it and get it as close to the green as possible, but it's a very elevated green that's really well protected. So I'm just trying to lay it down in the right edge of the fairway, but I cut it a little too hard and nestled up against those trees on the right side. So I'm in a tough spot again. Thought about hitting another ball, but I was like, yeah, whatever, let's just go. Exactly what you told it to. So the ball was way down there. It, it went into the tree, so I've just dropped one here and uh, have to kind of cut it around the tree and hit it up to an elevated green. So kind of a three or four out of five in terms of difficulty. The flag's way out there on the right. 
And there you can see, hit it on a perfect line, cut it up there, and hit a really good shot. Couldn't really ask for more from, from that than to you know, get it this close to the pin and give myself a chance at it. My take on putting is you should never leave a putt short. And I think people tend to overthink it in terms of trying to get a little too perfect with it and trying to just trickle it into the hole. And the visual I like to take is imagine that you were just you know, shooting a cue ball on a pool table into a pocket and how simple that feeling is. But really putting, it's like if you simplify it a lot more and reframe your mind in terms of, hey, this is actually a pretty simple thing I'm doing here and I'm going to make sure that I get the ball at least a foot past the hole. You're going to start hitting much, you're going to hit your line a lot more often and, and roll the ball better. This hole just kind of sucks, honestly. I, I don't like this hole. Um, the, the treeing is way too narrow. Like on a par five, you want to have to actually think about whether you want to hit driver or iron out the tee. And here it's just so narrow that I'm like, well, I'm, I have an equal chance at missing with either club. So I'm just going to hit driver anyway. And then the rain really, really started to come down. It's getting a little rainy, just a bit. First impressions, I like the course. Yes. I don't really totally get why people hate it so much. Yeah. It's very hard. It's manicured super well. It's really interesting. It makes you think unique. pretty hard. Yep. Maybe it's overly punitive in some areas. Why do you think people hate it so much? I think it's the green complex. There's just a, and there's a lot of bunkers on every hole. The fairways are relatively generous. Maybe Except not from one. not from the tips. Yeah. This course would just suck from the tips. We're playing at what 6,500? 67. Yeah. 67 plus the par threes surprises. Yeah. We're doing blues, but then we're playing whites for the par threes and for the number one and two handicap uh, other holes. Which, Which I think is a great way to play. Yeah. This is actually the number one handicap. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. I don't know. I just think, like, it seems like a fine course, though. Like, I don't I don't get all the hate quite yet. I get, I'm the opposite. I, I love it. These are full drive runs on the back nine. Yeah. But overall, I'm pretty pleased. And it also really helps when you're playing just two of us full course to ourselves. Yeah, we, put, we just played the first eight holes and our ninth tee shot in 50 minutes, 5-0. We got this little shower and then we're good to go. Just play fast. Play fast all the time. It's going to stop raining in about 10 minutes and then we're going to be three to two hours. Sweet. That's perfect. <laughs> Dude, on the drive here, it was like I couldn't see 50 feet in front of the car. And we're back for some more live golf action here. There's a guy next to me just hitting a chip shot, so I wanted to like make sure he had enough time. And now we are entering a challenging type of golf that I need to figure out a grip and glove combination that works because it is rainy, rainy, rainy now. And it's just hard to keep a grip on your clubs um, when it's this wet. So just try to pump that back into the fairway. This is one little trick that is useful. If you kind of carry your towel with you, you can hold it right over your grips up until the last second. and that. That does help a lot. So it's nice to have a, a towel you can quickly clip on and off. Still got a long way in here. I think this is a four iron or so by the looks of it. Sounded great. I don't know. Again, tracers will be coming maybe in the future, but yeah, you know, I don't know. Just. Keep hitting that subscribe button the more that come on and if i can start making some money off this channel maybe i can hire some people to do the tracers so another bunker shot here you can barely see the top of the flag and another really good thump there that was a really really good shot for me
Here's Jacob putting again. Great calves on this guy. Ooh. Mickelson-esque. No, no, no. And he kind of made the cardinals in there. He pumped it way too far by. Okay. Okay. Oh, boy. And, and he's, he's just so solid on those putts. He, he's got a good stroke. I gave him the tip that kind of unlocked his putting, which is having an extremely light grip. Your grip should really be probably three out of 10. If the USGA is listening, that is not golf instruction. I know it's very important that I keep my amateur status. I was merely expressing how I play the game. It is not instruction and I'm not being paid for that. So I missed that putt on the pro side. I mean, hit a fine putt, but just another one where it, it's, um, yeah, you, you're just a little bit off and that's all it takes. Uh, the difference between par and bogey is not a lot. Um, the difference between par and birdie is a lot. Like you gotta be perfect. Figured as long as we're here, it's the very first video. Yeah, let's just keep it rolling. I'm gonna give you the 10th hole here because it ends kind of fun. And I think it's a better way to end the video than just a dud bogey on nine. So I'm taking iron off the tee. Just trying to visualize the fairway as being a big green. And that's a good way to approach the par force. Uh, but that guy yelled at the top of my backswing <laughs> and I just completely topped it. Uh, I should have backed off, um, but we were trying to play in a hurry, so. So just regrouping here. Again, I'm not super serious about the scoring right now. I'm just trying to play some good golf. And so here's one. I've got about 15 yards of the pin. And I can't see it, but based on the noise, it went in. <laughs> so guys, there's the front nine. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot more content coming up. We're gonna have lesson stuff. We're gonna have uh, a lot more course vlogs. We're gonna uh, just be doing a bunch of different stuff on this channel and I think you're really gonna like it. Um, I'm having a great time going through all the footage and, and figuring all this stuff out. Um, so hopefully you'll think about subscribing. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely be sure to check out the Instagram as well. That's where I've kind of started out and um, posting a lot of fun stuff there. And let's grow the game. Let's have fun doing it. Thanks for watching. It does kind of look like, you remember in the old Tiger Woods games when you could Tiger proof the course? Mm -hmm. I feel like the BMW moves everywhere. But the course is in great shape, like the greens are really, really nice. Everything's lush. Like, I never played this course in five years of living in Chicago. It was a missed opportunity. I should have played this course at least three or four times over the last few years, so. Glad I finally made it, but. And same with ravines too, because that's also a little hidden gem. Ravines is awesome. Yeah. Not easy to block. Not easy.